Hey everyone, welcome back to Indicted TV. I'm your host, Negra. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram. Before we start, I do want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Royalty Honey. So I'm gonna give you a box too, you know? All right. All, all right. the Royalty Honeys, be ready, boo. <laughs> On um, on today's episode, we have Victor. Hi, Victor. Welcome to Indicted TV. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna we're gonna start, okay, Victor? Yeah. yeah so see. you're gonna tell me where where you where you're from? Not the gang. You know, I, I don't I don't want to know <laughs> uh, where you grew up. You have brothers, sisters. The inside of your house, meaning like you know how was it? Yeah. Um, things like that. All right. Yeah. Well, I was born in um, Carson, California, and um, you know my parents they're immigrants obviously you know and oh, what part of mexico or durango durango okay durango um i've only been there one one time in my life but um i believe like the peruanes or something but like i said i've only been there one time but yeah i have um two older brothers a younger brother and two sisters i'm the second youngest you know um but my little brother, he's not so little. He's big, but yeah, <laughs> still my little brother. For sure. Yeah, my mom and um, my dad, you know, they broke up when I was when I was still fairly young, you know, but not young enough where I don't remember my dad. But um, I just really never really paid him no mind, you know. Like once he left the house, it was like. It was like party time, you know, like he was a structure in the house. And okay. Whatnot. But yeah, when I was uh, small, like I, I don't remember much of my childhood, like probably until I was like about six or seven oh, years okay. old. So probably. everything and everything from like six and under, it was a blur to you. I, I want to say like even seven was a blur, but I kind of remember like being a kid and and like one of my uncles he used to favor me like the most and i just remember him like doing st stuff with me like acting like he takes off my nose and he has it right here and i got your nose yeah, <laughs> yeah that type of stuff and i remember like he would always give me money you know so your your uncle was kind of like your father figure a little bit mm, not really not really well um, he showed you love yeah but my padrino did also you know okay. it's just i was just one of those kids you know like they he, he, my tias like me and you know you're a like, likable boy <laughs> uh, yeah i want to say <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but, is that where you always grew up in carson no that's where i was born okay but, where did um, you grow up in the vermont square area like off of um king boulevard vernon 43rd mm-hmm like right there on USC. It's, okay, yeah, yeah, I know yeah, that area. That little stadium right there, yeah, right there. Um, until I was like about, I want to say like, like seven years old, six years old or so. I was young, you know, and and it was around the time of that big earthquake happened. Um, I was probably like seven years old. That a uh, Northridge. I, I want to say it's that one. one it was of the like in the eight, late eighties, something like that. But. Um, yeah, it was in the 80s. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, because I remember because sure. I lived on Martin Luther King and like um, right in front of the Martin Luther King Elementary, like one of those streets. So it's kind of the same area that you were kind yeah, of Yeah, yeah. That's crazy because we used to stay on, um, back in the days, uh, like on King Boulevard in Vermont. Um, now there's a soccer park right there, oh. like that big soccer park. Um, but before it used to be apartments and that's where we used to live at. But during that earthquake, our apartment, um, I don't really remember much, not even the earthquake. I just remember um, that our apartments, like they were made out of brick, like, you know, the old mm -hmm. apartments and the top floor or something collapsed. Oh no. Yeah, so, you know, the fire department came and they took us out, you know. Um, and the only part I really remember out of all of that is, uh, that we were staying across the street from, uh, there's a, a big swimming pool right there on Menlo and King. Okay. And um, the Red Cross came and aided us and built tents all on the parking lot on, along King. And yeah, that's where we were at because we couldn't go back into our house. Oh, that is, yeah. that is, that is terrible. Yeah, no, definitely. And the only parts I really remember from that 
not the earthquake, not anything like that. But what I do remember is like me being scared, you yeah. know, of like the thunder. It was raining during that time around the earthquake. If, it was trauma. For yeah, you, like pe people in the area, they they'll definitely know if they know. I was kind of still young. But um, but yeah, I just remember being scared in the tents and whatnot. So we really pretty much went homeless, you know, because I think my brothers went inside in the night, you know, because I mean we're from that local community, and um, they got some of our belongings, probably like just a little bit, because you know in reality you can't go up in there, you know. Yeah. So we lost everything, and um, my mom was working um for some Hawaiian guy that i've always known in my whole life as growing up like my mom worked for him you know and and what ended up happening was uh he had some apartments on 97th in like vermont um and he they had burnt down and he let us stay there you know while the they were the fixing place, it yeah so i mean from nothing to that was everything definitely yeah and definitely. i i remember like a little bit of about that time, like, I know we didn't have no furniture. I know, like, definitely we didn't have no clothes, no no dressers, no nothing, none of that, nothing, you know? Nothing. Yeah. Just and wherever you laid is where you laid. For real, for real. Like, no beds, no nothing. I don't know how for how long that lasted, um, but, I mean, after a while, you know, like, at, in the house was, like, my two older brothers, um, my sister, and then um, my brothers had their girlfriends over, you know, because they were already of age, you know. Okay. I was younger. And not to mention, like, the homies would always be around my brothers, you know, because both of my older brothers, I mean, you know, they, we shared the same gang, okay, you know. So, yeah, yeah, they're dead. So, so you kind of basically followed their footsteps. Not really, because, like, like, Growing up, I, I knew that they were gang members and okay. I knew that they had a bunch of friends that come over and whatnot. But no, nah, pretty much, you know, I was bad in my own way, you know. At, at what age did you start, like, seeing that you were already doing vagancias? Since I was young. Since I was young, like, for real. Um, in elementary, I was already hitting up the hood behind, oh, wow. behind my brother's back. And, you know, like, I'll write their name and, you know, like, <laughs> stuff the, like that. You, you were like the little or the baby. Yeah, but never did they know that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never did they know that, you know, because definitely uh, in that time, they'll be like, you know, they want me to do good and whatnot. Yeah. But, like not even school was my thing. I was. Did just, you graduate junior high? No, I was. I went to YA. Okay. Yeah, I went so to. So at YA. what age did you get in? Did you go to juvenile hall for it? Or what never. Did you, you never went to juvenile hall. No. no. So, first time busted. I well, of course, I went to juvenile hall. But so tell me about the first time that you got arrested and you got busted. I was. Um, I had just turned fifteen years old, you know, and I got into the hood when I was like. 13 years old mm -hmm. at 13 and um, officially courted in, you know, with your brothers knowing and everything. Well, because what happened was um, my sister, um, she got married with some guy, you know, which is the father of her kids. Mm -hmm. um, and she has um, three and a little one. Um, he was from Soflos, you know, a gang in South Central and, um, I used to go over there and hang out with him, you know, because over there hanging out with him, it was just, I felt more like, like I could just do me because they don't really know me, you know, and they used to call me villain over there, you know, because they knew my brothers were from street villains, you know, and, and whatnot. But when my brothers found out, they were tripping. I'm sure. They were like, oh yeah, you want to be gang banging? Like, okay. Um, Caught, got on the phone, called the homies, and they were like, hey, this fool got caught over there. The school police brought him over here home and whatnot. But what did you get in trouble for? For just hanging out. Like, we were on the corner of um, Maine and um, Imperial 
just there's like a church across the street from Gompers. And like after school or in the morning for school, like it was routine for them where we would just hang out mm -hmm. right there for by school, the church. Yeah. You know? That's where you guys would kind of meet and figure out if you're going to go to school or not. No, figure out like we weren't going to school for sure. That was not <laughs> even like my area, you know, like I was just over there because I built a relationship with them just Got from it. going and, you know, never did nothing. But my brothers, when they found out, um, they were like, you found them where? Wait, who? You know, so now they're getting at me like, like, oh, like if I had interest in getting into that hood or something, you know, mm -hmm. which that was never the case, you know. Yeah, you were proud to be where you were. Well, proud. definitely. Like, I wouldn't go around and telling them like, oh, yeah, I'm from here. Nah, like that was never the case. Because you, you used to go with your cuñado. Yeah. And he would tell them like, oh, yeah, that's um so-and-so's younger brother, mm -hmm. you know. So that's that's how that was. But um, so my brother, he gets on the phone and he calls the homies and he tells them like, hey, you know, this fool wants to be hanging out, like come through, like so we could court him in. But my brother was skeptical. He was like, if I find out that you got courted into soft lows, like like I'm going to take your ass over there. You're going to get your court out and whoever did it is going to get it, you know. So I was like, Fuck. like, <laughs> you know, I was just like, like. Dude, that was not even the case. But, of course, I can't talk to my brothers like that. You know, I was just more listening and just Whatever. just listening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the homies really showed up. They really showed up. Like, And they were like, what's up? You ready? And, you know, like, I was nervous. I wanted it, but I, I, I guess like everybody else, you know, I was just scared of the ass whooping, you know? <laughs> yeah. And... For us, it's like 43 seconds, you know, like not no 13 seconds or nothing, you know, like like 43 seconds goes a long way. For sure. It's <laughs> <laughs> almost a minute. <laughs> you know, 43 seconds goes a long way. No, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, so how many were there? Um, Three. Oh, yeah. So they really. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. They put yeah. hands on you and you and were small, huh? Keep in mind, like my whole generation everybody's older than me by like six seven years because of your brother's age they're all your kind of your brother's age yeah mm -hmm. like a little bit younger than my brothers because um one of my brothers he's 50 something 50 52 my oldest brother he's 52 and um um my other brother he's um like i want to say sorry bro i don't know yeah i wanted to say 50 bro but i know that's not it <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he's, nervous, know. Guys, he's nervous, guys. He's nervous. Like, he's like 40 something, <laughs> late 40s, yeah. you know? Um, but, like, that was more like their generation, yeah, you know? I, I get what you're saying. You're saying that everybody that, whoever was there to check you and all the homies were there, they're at least six years older than you. So those fools are men. Are You're like 13 years old. Yeah, These I fools used are to like wonder. 16, 17. I used to wonder like, damn, where are the fools my age? You know, like. There wasn't. There wasn't. There's only a few. There Those wasn't. days, it was only a few that, because honestly, like before, the, that's how old you had to be to get into the neighborhood. Yeah, You had yeah. to be young. Yeah, definitely. So if you were down, that's when you were down and you were that age. Yeah. Nobody was like 16, 17 getting in. No, now they now are. It now is. That's, it's different. that's when they're young. 16 cent no back Before then it was, it was like 13 12, 13, 12. Yeah. i got a i had a code defendant he was 11 years old and he was tatted yeah you know? wild so I, I mean yeah he was wild but he's he's on the other side you know he's been there but, yeah you know um so you got jumped in the, yeah and then not that happened? day not that day um that day you know i just kind of like talked myself out of it and i <laughs> i said like like tomorrow i just said it you know but i didn't mean it like literally like tomorrow and so they left me alone you know they didn't, weren't trying to pressure me no more to get like courted in. yeah 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 they left me alone but when tomorrow came they really showed up and i wasn't waiting for them like i had already forgot about it <laughs> and they showed up and i was like oh and as soon as they jumped I out see. yeah yeah that's exactly like Kind of like what happened, you know? <laughs> but I was trying to talk myself out of it th that day, but they were like, nah, nah. If you're gonna do like it, yesterday, you told us today. So, but we, 
gathered up. We're here today. Like, 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 what's up? You ready? And they started like acting like they were gonna um, start, you know. And it started off like a joke, but then it got really serious yeah. real fast, you know. Well, it's and, something that you shouldn't be playing with. Well, yeah, but I was trying to talk myself out of it again, you know. <laughs> 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 but they weren't having it to, yeah. today, and you know, they were like, "Nah, you said tomorrow, so tomorrow's here." Yeah. So what's up? And yeah, it started off plain, and then it got serious, and then the count started, you know. And once I heard counting, I was like, okay, like now, and I was getting punched up, and you know. Um, Did you fight back? Of course. <laughs> I don't of know. Of course, my 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 homie. Um, um, I'm not even gonna say his name because you don't need to say. He his says name. he slipped on oil, but oh. you know, um, everybody else around there. Says I caught him with one, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But he yeah, slipped. He's, you slip, fool. Don't worry. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I didn't see no oil, but it could have been some, you know. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But no, yeah, definitely. Um, I fought back. My brothers used to make me fight when I was younger, you know. Like not all the time, but like if they heard I had any problems, like they'll that's... definitely make it happen. Well, yeah, you know? that's you know, nip it in the butt. Let's do it, you know. Yeah. One time they made me fight and. You know, like before when I get so mad, I'll start like tearing up. You I know? think everybody, ha okay. that happens to everybody. Yeah, like, well, it like it doesn't happen to me like no more or nothing, but. Oh, it I, happened to me yesterday. I'm just kidding. Yeah? <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. Now, if we're watching the Titanic or something, I'll probably just oh, be like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, at least, hey, at least you're a little romantic, you know? No, it's not even that. I just. Um, <laughs> you feel things. Now. Yeah. I get Dude, it. I teared up for The Lion King. <laughs> no, but you know what? Well, because you grew up and you didn't know your dad. Well, I'm not, not sure even, if you knew. Not even I that. think it's just probably from the inside that we don't know we have these emotions and we're like, we have these feelings, but we don't know why. But it, there's always a reason why. Like, yeah, definitely. You know? Definitely. Um, but like right now, like just thinking about it, like, like. I never really paid attention to like the the trauma part about it and whatnot because I mean right now in my life you know I'm a crisis intervention worker you know for a gang intervention program you know and we work through and from the mayor's office and um, also through GRID um, which is gang reduction youth development okay and it's a community based organization you know um, and and definitely I've got into learn a little bit more about your trauma and and just the impact that growing up in a house just with no electricity or no gas could really do to a child you know or when they be like don't fight in front of the kids and stuff like that you know like people don't realize what that really does to that yes. kid you know and and which is pretty crazy to me to think, you know, that people do crazy stuff around their childs, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, me personally, like, you know, I'm not a dad, you know? Um, so I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know about that. But definitely, um, like, my godson, my sister's youngest one, like, you know, um, his dad, he he's never been around like my sister since she divorced for the first time like we've never seen somebody for her till this day you yeah. know i don't know because she was scared of bringing them around her brothers or what it was but i mean yeah we gave her baby daddy a hard time when he first hooked up with her just to tell you when she ran away from home the first time ever 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 busting that little stunt and uh and she's definitely going to see this, you know, <laughs> um, she knows that it's true that when she ran away from home, literally, my dad got me in the car and we went street through street, through street, through street, through looking street, through street, looking for her. And on the second or third day, as crazy as it is, out of all people in the world, who do we see getting out of a car? Going into a house, Your my sister. sister. I was like, I was like, what? Turn around, turn around, turn around. And I thought I was tripping, but no, yeah, really, we found her. And um, she went in the house, tried to hide out, and but I knew we seen her yeah. here, you know. So definitely, we came back again, you know. And um, 
and now like we didn't even come for nothing like now we know she's here you know yeah so so you I, know you I believe we took her that day home like we weren't trip like we weren't tripping on nothing else We're, she's going with us yeah you know and um and i mean you know her baby daddy i give him credit because i mean i was young he's much older but i did hang out with him and i do know him and 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 whatnot um he he really had heart to come to well, my yeah, house. Well, yeah, he didn't allow you guys to maybe a little bit to intimidate him because he wanted it. He wanted to have what he wanted to have. Yeah, and he was gonna deal with whatever he had to deal Definitely. with. Definitely, and, and he did, and that shows a lot of a man. When he walked in to my, he's one of the person that he really came to the house to meet my dad That's and cool. my mom, as far as I could remember, you know. Yeah. But just him coming into my yard to do that. Like it was everything. I lived in duplexes, you know, at this time on ninety seventh in Vermont, that house that I was telling you that they let us stay in. Mm -hmm. Well, we ended up staying there for I went to junior high around there and um and then I went to YA, but so I, I was there for quite some time, you know, and that was when I got into the hood and so I got memories there for sure. But we lived in duplexes and we lived in the last unit in the back. So everybody would be at my house. Like, I can't even tell you. Like, I'm talking about around the clock. Like, we had three, four people living with us in the Always. back, you yeah. know? And um, it was just out of control. You know, when my dad and my mom would come home from work, everybody would leave. And once my mom and dad comes home and they don't see nobody, then everybody just starts coming out. They didn't go nowhere. But they were probably getting, in the yeah. corner, probably went around the block. Yeah. But definitely that's how it was so my mom and my dad were they would never really trip because you guys were home yeah and there was nobody there when they got there you know yes. definitely even so at though, least you guys you at least you guys had respect for your parents as oh, far yeah, as like definitely. making sure everything goes smooth okay come back when she's here so yeah, they know yeah, that yeah, you're yeah, just yeah. arriving or whatever no which yeah. is you know at least you guys still have respect and you know you're they were there at least yeah you know, your parents. Like, even to this day you know like even to this date, you know, like my sister, you know, my mom passed away already. You Sorry. Know? Yeah. My dad passed away, my grandma, my grandpa, you know, so I mean, wow. my, my go ahead, go ahead. So basically all your like your family, immediate family, as far as like your mom and dad and grandma, like those are like people that mean everything to you or not. Yeah. Here. Yeah. No, well, really, it was like my grandma and my grandpa, like. I can't say I have too many memories of okay. them like that, especially not my grandpa, because I had to force myself to want to cry when I heard he passed away, even as bad as I felt, but I was in Hawaii. And I knew that it affected my mom a lot, and that's what kind of affected me because- Her pain. Yeah, like, because I really didn't know him, you know? And um, my grandma at that time, I didn't either, but um, right before her passing, not not even right before her passing, like two, three years before her passing, um, I built a relationship with her that I never thought I would build with her, you know? And and when she passed away, definitely she was very close to me, you know? Um, and my mother passed uh, two years after she passed away. Wow. My mom passed away in uh, 2019. Were you incarcerated when everybody passed? No, I was incarcerated when my dad passed. I was incarcerated when my grandpa passed, and I was out for my grandma and um, my my mother. Right. Well, let's circle back. Let's circle back yeah. because obviously you're on Indicted TV, right? Yes. And you're here to speak about your prison experience. Yeah, definitely. So tell me about the first time you got arrested. Was that the only time you ever gotten arrested? Because you said you didn't go to juvenile hall besides when you got arrested and you went to YA. Yeah. So tell me about that. Tell me, what did you get arrested for? Like, what, what you know, tell me um, about your case. I got arrested for the first time ever for um, first degree premeditated murder and uh, first degree premeditated two counts of attempted murder. Oh, wow. And um, it would have been three, but, you know. And you were how old? Um, 15. Wow. Yeah. 15 years old. Yeah. Fighting like three, four murder cases almost. Well. Sounds like no, it. No, it, I, I really was because, you know, like definitely I was in the car with one of the homies when 
their uh-huh. crime happen and 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 of course I'm on the run, you know? Um and so are they, you know, but now they're doing life. No, I think they back then I wanted to think that they got life, but they're out now, you know, because people that have life are out now. You yeah, because they got like 25 to life with people from way before. And a lot of these uh, cases, a lot of these things started changing with the new laws, especially yeah. when they get when they're getting when they got sentenced as a minor or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like whoever got sentenced as a minor, pretty much all of those got out. Mm-hmm. Not unless you had like special circumstances yeah, something and craziness. stuff. Yeah. And even people that got life as a as an adult and you got life off of enhancements mm-hmm. um when um that new law passed by um um that they can't give you time or they had to take off the time for the enhancements. A lot of people who had life, they got out yeah. cuz I know two of my homies that they got life and they're out. You know, yeah. so so yeah, definitely. But um, going back to yeah, your... yeah, yeah. What I was gonna say was like, so I was involved in two or three of my homies' um cases, and then plus um, I was um with one of my homies, older homies that um he passed away um in the process of us with the whole yeah yeah you know and 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 you know I was on the run for that. So then I went on the run for my homicide. And keep in mind, like, I'm 15 years old, you know? Yeah, you're a baby. Yeah. yeah. And um, I went on the run, supposedly me, and I went from South Central to Long Beach. On the run. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my brothers found out. They were like, dude, you went on the run to Long Beach? But to me, I was far because I never got up out of South Central. Yes. You know? Of course. I understand what you mean. Like, definitely. I went on the freeway and I was over here by a beach. So, yeah, to me, I'm far. Yeah. I thought I was golden. I was running around Long Beach. Like, like for was, real. Yeah. Like, if they weren't going to know me, you know? Hey, hey. That's just how crazy things were for me, you know? But um, my brothers found out, like, in a day or two, you know? And um, they were like, no, 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 no. They met me up in the hood. And I didn't know what I was meeting up there for, but my brothers had already like put something together to where I was gonna go for real on the run, you know? And um and and that's what happened, but dude, they how sent long, me how long after well, how long were you on the run for? Um, I wanna say like uh like definitely under a year oh so but it was uh, it was a few months that's pretty that's a long time yeah yeah because i went up north okay you know i went up north in a little town you know up there by like kelsaville ukiah in that area off of like highway 20 nine hours from south central you know um so i was out there with my homie and he let me in his house but we had the hood out there too. Okay. You know, um, and shout out to the homies in Lakeport. You know, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely um, we had a hood out there. So when I got there, it was like I must have courted in like thirteen people that little bit of time I was there, and I'm on the run. At fin- you're fifteen years old. Oh, in shit. the same parking lot. All whoever them. looked like they were banging we were cornering them in you know especially up there like i was running wild over oh, there you and know? you're supposed to be low-key yeah so it didn't last long so tell me about your arrest how did it happen um i got arrested um well obviously over there mm-hmm. you know i got arrested over there and then uh, um i got brought back over how did you get arrested? Did you just happen to get like? How did that I go? Dude, I was running around that whole town. Okay, you know, they knew, you were just running amok, and people knew like, "We gotta get this out of here." Well, not even just that. It's a li- really little town, and uh, you know, everybody tends to know everybody. And I see. And I wasn't no secret that I was there. You know, yeah. like all the girls, they're like, "Oh yeah, ah, come South Central." Down. <laughs> dude, the homies know when the homies from LA go out there, like. They'd be all type of girls all of a sudden and it, you know, like. No, I know what you mean. I'm just clowning yeah. you. But, um, <laughs> but no, yeah, definitely. Um, so they, you got arrested and they brought you back down. Yeah. So you went to juvenile hall. Where did they take you? 
um, to Los Padrinos. Okay. Yeah. And how was that experience? Because it's your first time in a jail, in like being incarcerated. How did you feel when you were driving in the car? Like, what were you thinking? Um, you know, you're getting there. How does it look? What I was thinking was just like everything I've heard, like, food, don't talk. Don't say shit, you know. Um, you don't know shit, you know. And and I was just rehearsing that shit in my head, like you know, like okay, you know. And and in reality, like like I knew I was gonna go to jail, like like so I had already kind of put it in my head. Mm -hmm. As crazy as it sounds, no, I I know, yeah, I know that as crazy as it sounds, um, cause like like I was fifteen years old. And, you know, and and now, right now, I look at a fifteen year old and I'd be like, I, I trip out. You they know? look so different. Yeah, yeah, and I I see a picture of myself like I wanted to bring it, you know, because I can't believe that I used to wear size fifty pants. <laughs> no, swear <laughs> our days. That's how they dressed. Dude, my cousin, um, he he was from the hood too, and my mom. Send me over there because my tia was Jehovah Witness, so she was gonna straighten me out. Segun, but, <laughs> but but what did end up happening was uh, I got introduced to Frisco Benz because that's what my cousin used to wear. Okay. So now I once I knew about Frisco Benz, it was like like that that was the ones for me, you know, and Those and were Ben it. Davis. Mm -hmm. I never wore Dickies, never, never in my Those life. Those were it. I've never owned a pair of Dickies, but yeah. Um, so you're the, getting to Los Padrinos. How yeah. does it, when you're, you know, they're, you're getting into the gate, how's it looking? How, you know, how, what are they telling you? I'm just remembering stuff in my head that um, nobody's my age, you know? So I don't got no homies in juvenile hall. Like, mm -hmm. I am the homie in juvenile hall, you you're know? The, yes. Like, literally my whole... YA experience and my first time being in jail ever, I went to YA. Like, you know, I, I went to YA. I got found guilty for... How long did you fight your case for? Um, or like, you know, your whole... I was fighting my fitness, I want to say, for like like 10 months or so. And then um, after my fitness... Um, how was your... those? How was your first months in juvenile hall? Did you fight, you know, like... It, um what was the worst thing you saw in Los Padrinos? Um nothing. Padrinos was soft, you know, to me cuz I was already really hardcore, you know, yeah. like like I wasn't tripping on much, like as crazy as it sounds, but I already had these thoughts in my head of what it was going to be, you know? So and obviously everybody knows that you're 15, everybody's your age kind of there, but you're 15 and you're fighting all of these things. So they're like, oh, we this fool because. That was another thing that automatically like fools were intimidated by me, you know, like, and then like I, I, I've met a lot of people, you know, I met a lot of homies through the process of that. But in reality, like I can't really think of me being too like scared or nervous or nothing. If anything, I was like, like feeling tough and, and gangster because I was uh, on what's called HRO, like high risk offenders. Mm -hmm. you were the one with the orange. And orange, like we're going to YA. Mm -hmm. So the foods and brown or whatever color yeah. they have, like they're really not trying to mess with us. You know, yeah. like them foods and orange, they got a long time. And exactly. Them foods, them yeah. foods are crazy over there. So what did you end up getting sentenced to? Um, I got sentenced to juvenile life and um, juvenile life category one, which is to my 25th birthday, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I got out on my 25th birthday. And what were your actual charges that you got sentenced um, to? Um, premeditated first degree murder and two counts of uh, premeditated okay. first so, degree attempted murder. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't actually get charged with the actual murders. Thank God. No, yeah. I, I, that was my charges. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. Like I, I found guilty saying. for it and they for gave those, me juvenile yeah. life. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you get to, so you, how did you feel when they said? Honestly, I didn't even know what was going on in the court. 
until I see my homie's mom crying, which is my co-defendant. Like, I don't even want to talk about him, but um, until I seen his mom crying and... Um, and I was just like, what's going on? I, yeah. And my mom doesn't even speak English. So she definitely don't know what's right, going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was just, just there like, supporting huh, because like, I'm, mom. yeah, she wants of to course. Know. And, uh, you know, um, the little one at that time, you know, like, I think my little brother was around too. But, but still my mom, like. She, You're a baby. She, yeah, definitely. But my mom, I, she didn't even know what was going on. And then I was just seeing the commotion over there with. The my people. co-defendants and until finally you know i asked like 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 what happened you know and they didn't even say nothing but I, as i was asking I, I was hearing the judge you know saying that um he sentenced us to the california youth authority i just remember a little glimpse of what i was hearing but i was trying to figure out what was happening but definitely i don't understand the judge you know but I understood that we were getting sentenced to the California Youth Authority, and um, I definitely understood um, to my 25th birthday. You wow. know, and um, they rounded up the time. I want to say it was like nine years and ten months. Yeah, like nine, from 1997 to 2007. Wow. So how much is that? Um, That's like fucking almost ten years. Yeah. 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 And um, so, I don't know. I didn't feel pretty much nothing. You probably weren't feeling anything. You're young. You're just going through the motions without even knowing what motions you're going through. And I wasn't feeling nothing, but I know that in the court tank, when they put me back after my mom left, I I hugged her. And um, I was just wanted to know what was what happened, you know? Like, like am I really going to get out when I'm 25 or what the <sighs> hell, you know? Like, I I still didn't know. You know, because I just didn't know. And I was just going with the punches, really, you know. Um, I wasn't all turned up or nothing like that. But definitely I was, like, nobody to mess with either, you know. Like, yeah. Like, when I get more comfortable, probably I open up more. But for the most part, I'm just observing mm -hmm. and just listening and just, you know, just being observant of things, you know, seeing how the program is and whatnot. So when you got back to the unit after the court, At court, I took off on somebody in the back holding things. Oh, you were pissed? I think I just did it. Because you just, yeah, you're going through the motions. You don't know how, us, you know, we kids. <laughs> I think I just did it. Like, we, I mean, yeah, well, in our heads, that's exactly what we're thinking. I think we just did it just I think because. he told me something or something yeah, happened. Yeah, but, you and, know, in and, reality, and, like, those are the emotions. That's how we, as troubled teens release our anger or like emotions you get what i mean yeah like, yeah definitely at, obviously at the moment you didn't think about it like that you know you probably thought about it like it triggered you or some shit yeah but you were only triggered because you just got sentenced to juvenile life yeah you know what i mean i remember like you know i would i would just sit there in my bunk and i would just think like like dude what really happened you know like like because I, I keep hearing that um, we're going to do this. We're going to go to um, Silmar and then YA is going to pick us up. And, I, you know, I started listening and hearing stuff, you know, and the parole board gives you the real time that you're going to do. They give you your release date. OK, so that's what I was looking forward to. Okay. That's why I, like, Did you see the parole board when you got to YA or in Silmar. Yeah, no. And um and SRCC okay. at the reception center in Norwalk. Um, yeah, and like, but from Los Padrinos, I went to Central, from Central, which is East Lake. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Um, and then from right there, they sent me to Silmar. Okay. So, how was it? What was the difference from Sil? I mean, from Los Padrinos to East Lake? Because East Lake is active. Yeah, East Lake is very active. Especially in yeah. those years. Yeah, that was the most active little while um juvenile hall that i've Experience. i've encountered yeah you know it was it was like the homies were really gang banging right there and yes. they really looked like gang members right there for some reason opposed to those padrinos i know and silmar mean. yes like that's a trip i never thought about that but yeah you're absolutely right yeah that's crazy <laughs> did you get any fights while you were there just i was there by? for a short time like um i don't really remember like no fight that sticks out in my head like yeah. that you know like 
the fight that I do kind of do remember is like two fights in Silmar, you know, um, with my enemies, you know, and yeah, I'll go to the hole and stuff like that. But like for for stealing people's shoes and shit, like they got fresher shoes than mine, and I just ah, you were a shoe them, stealer. They nah. used to put them. They used to put them outside of the doors, you know, and. And you can't take them in your cell, you know? No, yeah, I remember that. And then we would be lined up or something, and I would just, okay. just flop them and whatnot. And then they'll end up telling on me, and they'll take me to the hole and whatnot. But, you know, um, it, was, it was a crazy experience. And then so from Silmar, um, YA picked us up. Okay, tell me about you walking into YA. I don't know. I thought it was cool. Like... I finally got a button up shirt that I've always wanted. The light blue one. Yeah. Like I've seen pictures of my brothers with these things on forever, you so know? You feel like you're accomplishing something. N not even that. I was just like, oh shit, like this is what it is. You know? yep, like now. this is, I had some boots. I was like, I can't wait to polish these up, you know? Yeah, well, you, that's, you know, not, now that's your life and that's what you look forward to. Yeah. You know, and as, as crazy as that might sound, it was something that, you know, to look forward, like, oh, yeah, like, put my little botitas on, tie them up. I mean, not the little botitas, but, you know, that's just me talking. Yeah, you know, yeah, tie yeah. them up, and I'm going to be f***ing G'd up. Yeah, definitely. You know, right now that 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 I was just thinking about it, because I really don't, like, want to start naming all kinds of people no, and Oh, yeah, whatnot. you don't need to. Of course not. So, um, but, you know, this particular homie that I'm going to mention, you know, and I don't know where he's at in his life right now or whatnot or how's he doing or anything, but um, he was from La Puente, you know. Um, they call him Mino Boy. Um, um, I want to say he was from, like, Rama Street or something like that. And I used to uh, ask him to, like, write letters for me because I didn't even know how to spell. Oh, no, because you didn't really go to you didn't really go to school. I didn't. And this is all when you got to YA. Yeah. Okay, so let's start back. Let's let's go back back. So you're not back back, but you're getting into YA. You know, you got your clothes. You know, you're getting comfortable with uh, the program. What was the difference between the juvenile halls and the YA to you? Because now, like you know, as I say, like they have different rules. And was there like somebody no. that had to lace you up? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Like, um, and SRCC. Um, I don't recall as much as like, um, definitely they run you down with the program, you know, but like, it's not too much of the, no, not at all. I think nothing. it's just kind of like more inside of there, but you know what? I mean, YA has his own set of politics, you know, like, like, like for real. Well, tell me a little bit about it. Obviously and, why and a lot of YAs are closed already. So, look, you know what I'm saying? I went, I went to Fred Cinellis, you know, and, um. And Fred Cinellis, I mean, the homies from Paso say that Paso was more active. Bullshit. I know. My son's father was in YA. He did juvenile life as well. And I have a lot of homies that went to YA, to all of those as well. Yeah. Um, so I always used to hear these stories as far as like what you're saying. Like, It, it was, it, I mean, Fred Cinellis was, was something else. Tell me. It was something or else. Or tell us. Um, I mean, Fred Cinellis, like. When you hear stories about people getting like hurt, their mm -hmm. manhood took in and whatnot, like that was really happening in Y. And there like, was like nothing nobody could do, huh? Dude, like people thought it was cool to knock out your homies and 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 do that type of stuff, you know. And and you know, I used I like I I just never understood it, you know, because I was like, damn, these fools don't really think about when they're older, you know, like what the hell? Like, yeah. Now that that'll blow somebody's career. Oh, ASAP, for sure. You know? For sure. And uh um Especially because a lot of those boys are in prison. Yeah, like I know. With some the other boys, you know, like the old like yeah, the prison. And it men just takes prison. one person to just remember those type of situations. Uh -huh. and, and it's over with for you, you know? Um, just like when you come to YA and you know, the homies ask you, like, you're going to be Firme or Leva. Yes. Well, I had young you know? beefs. Yeah. I had young be beefs. He was from um, Baldwin Park. And he was telling me, it's like, he fought through all his whole thing. Dude, I mean, I want to say I fought every day, well, twice a day sometimes for like a whole year. Tell tell us, like, what were the reasons? Dude, I was... you didn't want to be... Uh, no, I was there for homicide on one of the biggest... So, I mean, 
their homies were waiting for me, you know? Yes. And then I'm like the only one from my hood. Like my whole Everybody's time, older, like you said my earlier. My whole time, I wish I had a homie. I wish I had a homie. And no, it didn't happen all the way to the end um, when I was already like 25, 24. Um, like my last year, um, you know, shout out to the homie Hefty. You know, he's in prison and um, he's the only homie that really, I, I even did him a tattoo on his chest. Oh, so you learned how to tattoo in there? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> he of said, course. of course. All on my legs, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because yeah. so, yeah, I'm going to ask you, so what did you do for, you know, to your, for your pastime? Because obviously there's always shit to do. There's always like something, you, you know? know. What did you do? Because that, like for your, to get your money, like your hustle, like, you know, you, so you tattoo, things like that. Like, you know, I mean, the homies will cut out, you know, you, you got a big audience, you know, and they're going to call out bullshit when they oh, see, for hear sure. it. And, you know, like. My whole stay in like any type of like jail settings, like I've always been in some type of leadership position. Okay. And like I want to say like that was already like kind of in me because I wasn't even 18 years old. And like I said, you know, your audience is going to call out bullshit when they see it. But I was really shot calling my dorm, NYA, Fred Cinellis. I was a shot caller throwing juntas. And so you're and, the ones that were gonna. You were the one deciding if there were I mean, levas was, or yeah, definitely. Or somebody or did me. something, you know, some um, somebody did something or something, you know. Of course, um, I had that title for for at least one time since I was there. Definitely, yeah. you know. But I mean, it it took a minute, you know. Yeah. It took a minute, but once I got in my comfort zone, like you know, I'm for the program, you know, like like. I don't like to, like, have homies walking on eggshells, putting homies on quiet. Like, if anything, if I walk into somewhere like that, like, for real, for real, like, I'd rather just get in the mix and just so we could all live better, you know, for the better sake of the program. A lot of things has changed now. We don't need to speak about that kind of stuff. Yeah, but but what I'm saying is, like, uh, um, so the era has changed oh, all the way around, yeah. you know, like... Um, it just changed all the way around, and, and especially in the jail settings, you know, because before, and and Fred Cinellis, when I first got there, like somebody really walks up to you and be like, "You're firme or you leva?" What? I'm firme. Oh, uh, all right. Um, you know, this is the toilet we use, and this is the sinks we use, and we don't do this, and we don't do that, and we don't do this, and we don't do that, and we don't do this, and like a whole lot of that, mm -hmm. you know. And then, um, you know, I got people that I need to fight with because I'm in here for their homie, you know? So definitely um, on my first day walking into um, my main line, not the reception, uh, whatever that reception is called right there. And uh, Fred Cinell is when you wear white and you work in the kitchen. I forgot the name of it. But... You know, now when they send you to your regular unit, you get your blues and stuff like that. And then, you know, when you're in your whites, you just look at them and you just be like, like, damn, they're really over there, you know? Yeah. But we're going to be there. And you hear all the bullshit that goes on and and all uh -huh. everything. So in our reality, you're just waiting for it, you know? You're just for, waiting for, for it. Your, for your name to be called, your number to be called so you well, can go yeah, over like, the wall. Yeah, and you know everybody's nervous. I see, post. come on. As it is, nobody wanted to go to Fred Cinellis because Fred Cinellis was pretty turned up, you know, at least when I was there. Especially with what you just said, like, that's not okay, and it was really happening, you know? And there's, like, really nothing that you could do. And I say this to say this because a lot of people, a lot of our followers, like, on the Instagram, they don't, a lot of times they just they just see the little clip, you know, and sometimes I'll be saying some crazy shit, right? Yeah. And they don't they just see the little clip, but they don't actually go look at the whole episode. Yeah. And it's like he's like, Oh, well, why are they why would they let the homies it wouldn't be going down like this? Like, you don't know because yeah. you weren't there. Yeah. And this is not a, a I mean, it's not an adult prison. It's not it's completely different. And it's like there's nothing that you could do because all you could really do is protect yourself because you're a young boy. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. And not even just that, like YA, it's identical to prison, identical to prison, but 
for youth. Those fools are wild as f Like our clothes says PIA. We eat, we have prison boots on. PIA, you know, like, like it's prison for youth. Yeah. Straight up. That's you exactly know? what it is, yeah. The cells open the same, the windows, everything's the same, dude, you know? Except the way you guys work it in there. Except, like, if Fred Sinellis, like, dude, everything goes. Like, on my first day walking into Mainline, um, Washington, uh, Washington was more like, like... That was the name of the, the unit. The unit that yeah. I went to. It was like Washington, Jackson, Hayes, um, Monroe, or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. But, um... You know, my first day walking into Washington, and keep in mind, that's not even like the turned up unit, unit, you know? Like, I think Cleveland was, you know, um, that's where the homies, like, got cigarettes, and, and they get shit from the streets okay. and stuff like that, you know? But, so, so I mean, I could imagine how active it was there, you know? But I wasn't there. I was in Washington, and, um, and in Washington, on my first day, I, I had told my mom, remember I was telling you about the story about taking the shoes and whatnot? Yes. Well, when I was going to YA while I was in the hallway waiting for to get picked up, I took somebody's shoes, you know? And um, I thought I came up. I had some fresh, all-white Nike Cortez. And I was like, like these? <laughs> exactly like those. Exactly like those. And, um, you know, I thought I came up. I get to the next unit and the cop comes up and he's like take off your shoes you know he and knew. i was like wow this fool really told on me you know like he really told on me and and he gang banged too you know um but yeah he told on me <laughs> and they took my shoes and they didn't even give me no chanclas or no nothing so you didn't have no so shoes now i don't have no shoes you know and they're just they're just being a-holes you know and and whatnot but i didn't have no shoes so the first chance I got to get on the phone, I called my mom. And my mom's always been very supportive of me, you know, to her last day, you know. Um, mom, I need some shoes, you know. And keep in mind how crazy I was that I tell her, like, yeah, give me the white Nike Cortez, but make sure they got the blue Nike sign because I wanted a match with my no. suit, you know. Like, <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah, I was already thinking up. ahead. Yeah. yeah, of course, you know. So I wanted a match. And I was like, yeah, okay. She got them for me. And then... Um, was she able to take it in or did you have to switch? Uh, I, no, I think uh, she dropped them off and they gave them to me at oh. visiting or something happened like that. Something in that nature happened. And um, so, yeah, I get these shoes. And keep in mind, never did I think, like, I'm going to Fred Cineles or Paso Robles. I've never been there. But I'm just saying, like, never did I think about that. Like, that was not when even a thought. When you were taking thought. the shoes. Of course. Dude, they're about to test me for these shoes. Like, these shoes are going to be the reason for a whole lot of nonsense is going to happen the with The new me. shoes that you got. Of course. Because that's a good way. Like, if you're a fish and you barely walk into my unit and and I see your shoes and I'm going to just be on them. Like, like, so the second that you say you're leva and you don't want to be firme, them shoes are mine. For real, for real. And anything else, stamps or whatever else you might have, you know, because now you got to get put under somebody's guns. And that somebody fills out your canteen slip and tells you you only got like twelve dollars for yourself. <laughs> so it's kind of it's, you know, <sighs> yes. No, like a pimp. But, well, yeah, I, I didn't want to say that, but <laughs> that's just what crossed my mind. Yeah, Sorry, but guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. But, but it's so sad. I mean, but yeah. I mean, I mean, at least I knew what I signed up for, you yeah, know, like a lot, of, a lot of these young men actually don't know, you know what I'm but, saying? But definitely. So I get to Washington. Right. And um, you're going to be feeding me. Dude, what? I felt disrespected. Like, I'm going to be feeding me. Like, what you, like, like, what's up? All right. They start telling me you can't do this. That right. And then some some guy like I'm not even going to say his name, but he's looking at my shoes and I'm seeing him looking at my shoes, you know. And I already knew, like, damn, I messed up. Like, damn, I should have got these shoes later, you know? Yeah. Like, but me, I want to look G'd up, of course, you know? Yeah. Hey, what size are your shoes? He tells me, you know? And I was like, I was like, what? And keep in mind, the homie's telling me the reglas and whatnot. And then this fool hits me with that shit, you know? And I'm like, I was like, what? 
And I was like, I just brushed them off. And I was like, they're my size, you know? Like, like, well, what's up? You don't want to sell them? Does it look like they're for sale, bro? Like, nah, these are my shoes. All right. Um, palabra, I'm going to take them. So you, didn't you have to, like, take off on that phone? No, watch. I Well, I would have later. But, like, right there and then, I'm just like... He hasn't said in. nothing to me that disrespects me still, you know, even though he's like, palabra, I'm going to take him. I didn't know that palabra means like you're everything right there. Like, yeah. You better not say palabra and not follow through with it because you're going to be leva. I don't care what you say. Facts. 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 For real, for real. And that's in real life. No, yeah, that's that's real talk. So, um, you know, um, I don't know what palabra is, you know, but I know that that first night that I was there. I was trying to stay awake all night, dude, because I didn't want to get my shoes took. And I knew they were in that locker. And I don't know how they still here. Like, you know, they probably go in your locker when you're asleep or something, you know? Oh, no. So I'm trying to really stay up all night. And at some point, I must have dozed off, you know, at some point. But... In the morning when they woke up, everybody, I woke up like, like oh, sh the my first, my shoes, dude, they got me. I was thinking like, damn, they got me. And I didn't even care where they were like, short wall, tall wall. No, hell no. I got up, went straight to my locker, like screw everything. I want to see my shoes are right there. Were they there? Hell yeah, my shoes were oh. right there. That was like Ooh, relief. I was fucking nervous. No, I was, I was nervous. nervous. <laughs> I, was I was nervous. nervous. <laughs> I, I was nervous, but you know. It was just a big relief yes. that my shoes were there. I got them and they were like, hey, put your shoes there. They hadn't called my side yet to get oh, up. Yes. But I, I woke up out of a dead sleep like like my shoes. <coughs> no, yeah. You know? Thank God they were there. And I took them with me. I didn't even care what the cop was saying. Like I took them with me, put them on. Now I'm cool. We go to breakfast. And when we get back from breakfast, you know, um, the homie, he tells me like, hey, yesterday when you got here, um, did Wooty Woo Woo tell you palabra he was going to take your shoes? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, all right. Um, right now when they open up yard, we're going to throw a meeting. And we just need you to say that, you know? And he might take off on you, but, you know, like, like it That's is right. what it is, you know? So I was like, yeah, for sure. Because he really did say that to me, you know? And um, this is just, I only slept here one night, you know? Yes. And um, and so we, yard opens up and the homies are over there by in the back by the handball courts, like in a little circle, you know, like, like. It's like, movie shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's real. But it feels cool at the, like, no, you know, I, it feels I cool. I know exactly what you, know? you mean. Yes. So. um, It's not cool, guys. No, it's not cool. It just felt cool. Yes. <laughs> but, um. So yeah, the homies are over there circled up and, and and next thing you know, you know, I go over there and they're like, Hey, um, like tell them what what old boy said, you know? And I just looked at him because the homie told me, like, fool, this is how you're gonna do it, you know, you're gonna tell this fool like like fool, you gave me your palabra, like your palabra ain't shit, you know? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. They were probably already on that fool or something, huh? Yeah. And that fool had been there three years or three years or four years. He was probably like a super bully. He was that's all I'm gonna say, you know. But uh, um, so, so so this guy, I we're in this meeting, and the homie's like, "Yeah, go ahead, like you know." And I was like, "My boy, like yesterday when I got here, like you told me palabra, you were gonna take my shoes, and your palabra ain't shit." And boom, that foot takes off on me. So now we start fighting. Boom, boom, boom. And the cops like, "Hey, yeah, break it up, whatever." You know? Did, and, did, uh, did you have to get down in the whole no, thing? No, I got maze. Cause, oh, okay. Because the Tell homie me. was like, "Fool, just stay on this fool," because he's gonna he's gonna try to stay on your shit. You know? So he didn't put his shoe on you. No, hell no. I would. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, well, because what, no, is, it, hell what is it no. called when they do that? You will get dropped level. Okay. What is the <laughs> other term? Getting stomped out. Okay, no. Beat up. Isn't that what that means? Oh, you get beat up for a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, I just wanted to clarify. <laughs> yeah. Because in the, my last episode, I said it, and everybody was like, oh, how disrespectful is she? Like, no, you just don't know. No, yeah. Like, you could do you could do numerous of things, and it'll get you dicked up. Okay. Drop your soap and pick it up and see what's going to happen. Okay. You're going to be dicked up as Even if you just... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but even if, well, that just means you just drop it and you just go down. No, it you doesn't mean it doesn't necessarily mean like something bad is gonna happen. No, you drop it, you better not pick it up. Okay, not because like your butt's gonna. Get yeah. You. Okay. None no, it's just the fact, like nigga. You, like, I never heard about that. Like who you like, are bending over. Period. Naked. No, it's more of a the soap fell and everybody's washing off their dirt and every uh, all the dirt's going into the same drain and the soap. It's going to slide to that drain. So where you're going to pick it up from is that drain. So do you, even though it's soap, but do you really want to use it? Like, no, that makes a lot of sense. So some of the homies, so to avoid that, because even I did it for, I can I don't remember how long, but for a very short period of time, I did it because uh, um, I was using dub soaps, you know, like. That's when my mom would send me dub soaps. And um, and I would poke a hole through them and put a string through them. And that way they don't slip out of your hand and fall. Like oh, they're I see on a string. Saying. On the actual soap, you you would... Tie okay. a string to it, it and just put it around your, Para que no se te caiga. your finger, wherever, you know? Para que no se te caiga. You know, because if that soap falls, like... And it's dude, expensive and your mom is sending Whoever it. right next to you could pick it up. And you just can't. Like, I just can't, you know? Um, so yeah, like like oh, wow. it's crazy, huh? Yeah, I know. But like if I was using an Irish spring or something, like I wouldn't care, you know, like yeah. Yeah, know? I used to wash my clothes with the Irish spring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but my mom used to always like I thought Pantene Pro V was like the the best. the best. I used to always tell my mom to give me that and the She used to send you the best. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and Kool you know, Aid. It's lo mínimo que she probably felt que es lo mínimo que ella puede hacer for her son. You know son. what? My mom, like my mom, she was something else, dude. My mom, you know, my whole life, like I never heard her talk smack about nobody. I, I never heard her chismeando about nothing she didn't care about the police she was like that let them deal with what they're dealing with you know um my mom i could walk in at three in the morning and she's gonna be like she'll hear me in the kitchen she'll be like Ay, andas como un ratoncito, you know mm. like and you know like she just got her little robe on and she's like you're hungry you know and that's and, love yeah, That's definitely, love. definitely. And that was into her last day, you know. And when she cooked, you know, she'll be like, ¿Cuántos platos? You know, because she know we got homies outside, you know. Yeah. My sister does that still. You know what? I feel like in those years, a lot of moms were like that. Yeah. Because it's all like my aunt was the same way. Like she would cook for everybody because she knows all my cousins were bringing their friends. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It was so... I feel like those years were so different. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, so let's circle back. Um, I know I for every... For, at least for me, like, I feel like speaking about moms and like... Yeah. It's kind of like very... It's very touching and no, very yeah, emotional, definitely, you know? Definitely. Especially um, for me. So, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was yeah, going to say. Yeah, so let's circle back. Yeah, let's, <laughs> we're in YA. Let's get tough again, yeah, yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's get turned up <laughs> we're, <better>. we're in <laughs> Yeah, YA. let's get turned up So, better. um... Yeah. You so you guys started getting down. Cops came. You got maced. Yeah. And this is your second day there. Yeah. I just been there sleep one night. Oh yeah. You one, know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was the first time that like I felt YA mace, like you know, because uh, um or a fogger or something. It was just something that I had never felt before because I've been maced before. You know, like I've fought in the showers before <laughs> naked. You know, like that's nothing you know but the ya mace different hits you different you know like stronger it's stronger like i don't know i couldn't i just had a whole bunch of boogers coming out of my nose i couldn't breathe i couldn't open my eyes at least with the other type of mace i could like see little blurs but with the ya mace that thing was just burning me up like it was just really burning my skin you know yeah and it was just a different taste Went to the infirmary, they washed us up and whatnot. You know, they just throw us under uh, water. the water, you know. And we went right back to our unit. He went to his bed and I went to mine, you know. But he now was... he's Leva. Oh, he was Leva. So he you was... think he was cool with it? Oh, he was pissed. Yeah. You guys so... were fighting every so, day yeah, still. So we got back to the unit 
And uh, I already knew he was going to rush me again. I, I knew it, you know? So we just got it out the way, you know, as soon as we got back. Yeah. You know, we got down again and they, we took it, we went to the infirmary and we came right back to our same bunks again. Oh, wow. Yeah. How many times did you guys fight? Those two times, oh, because okay. after the second time we came back, they um, they just kind of like like had our eyes on us and whatnot. But um, but he was still Leva. He was the whole still time, Leva, definitely, and it's not over, and it's not over for sure. He's been there for three years or so, you know, and I've only been there two nights, you wow. know. But um, definitely, uh, what ended up happening was like on the third day, or. Yeah, on the third day, I was going to say fourth, but no, like it happened consecutively one after another. Like on the third day, so um, when we go to breakfast, they the cop stays behind and they search the dorm and like go through the bunks real quick and whatnot, you know, do a little walk, you know. And um, searching his bunk, they found a piece of glass that he had um, in his personal belongings, like a good piece of glass. So definitely he was going to try to use that on oh, me. You know, I, I know for a fact, but that got him snatched up. So it worked out on your behalf. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Because now it's only my third day. Everybody knew he got caught with that and he's gone to the hole. Like he's not here for sure no more, you know? Um, and he probably caught a case, you know? Um, but now it it just opened up more doors for me you know like as far as like, what as far as the program the homies like you know like i, I and just, on the fourth day five I, the first week i was i just fell right in like you know this was for me right here you know and 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 i just that's where i just started you know and 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 i just knew i had a lot of people to fight with because even right there when i got there um, the homie was like, hey, you from, you from Street Building? Yeah, why, what's up? I'm from woo, 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 you know, for who I'm there for. And, you know, when we get a chance, you know, what's up? Like, yeah, don't trip. And another one comes and another one comes. And in my head, I'm like, dude, like, what the hell? That was four fools already from that, from that hood. Like, and are in they my allowed, dorm. Are they allowed to hell jump yeah. you? Oh. No, 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 not jump me, no. But you just got to do one-on-ones for, with the four Yeah, of them. yeah, yeah. Yeah, more like no, I never got jumped. No, I don't know. Well, that's good. Um, it's just more one on ones, but you know, keep in mind they test you at this Fred Sinellis place. You know, like that guy was trying to test me for my shoes, and if I would have showed any sign of weakness, believe it, that my shoes would have been gone. Oh yeah, you know. Uh huh. So now, like, you gotta obey by the rules. You know, like, don't. Use your toothbrush and sit it on top of the sink without your toothbrush holder. Because if you put that toothbrush back in your mouth, you're leva. Wow. Straight up. If you open up this water bottle and this cap, you put it facing downwards mm -hmm. and you put it back on there and you drink, you're leva. Oh, so there's a lot of rules that you oh, have yeah. to adjust yeah. and you have to remember. Yeah. So you're like walking on eggshells 24 7 because you don't even know. Well, it's just the program, you know? That's just Everybody's already doing it. Yeah, that's the program, you know? And, um, and, and, you know, um, the Firme Raza, we have these chairs in the front row in front of the TV. The Levas, they don't even have a chair, you know? Like they're sitting in the hard bags and the metal tables in the back and whatnot, you know? Or nowhere. You know, um, or if somebody has them under the gun and they let them sit on one of their chairs, because I could have like 10 chairs and nobody sits on there and nobody's going to sit on there because they're my chairs. And even if the cop tells them like to fill them in, like I recall, like nobody was sitting on the chairs, you know, um, at some point. Unless another female rasa homie comes. Um, well, yeah, female rasa. Like if they're my personal chairs, like you gotta get permission. Kind How of. do you get personal chairs? Um, you know, it's YA. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. It's YA, you know. Okay. And Fred Sinellis, you know. We had a uh, soft bags, you know. They ended up taking those out. You know, I wasn't there for that, but 
I heard eventually they were gone. But um, yeah, like we'll get chairs. Like um, I was working a postery shop, so I used to make chairs. Oh, okay, that makes sense. You know, that so, makes sense. So I'll just send them back. But no, definitely, homies have a role. You know, like the whole role is theirs. Wow. You know, and nobody's gonna sit there. Um, that's just the way. It that's exists. just the way the program is. You know, and um, and whatnot. So. Like, like for say, like if you're missing something or something, you know, like fools will go in front of the TV, cut it off and be like, hey, check me out. Uh, whoever, whatever, 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 you know, F your rest in peace homies and uh -huh. whatnot. And that's like the biggest disrespect you could do to somebody, you know, like for sure, by far, like that's on site, like no matter the where, the yeah. you know, yeah. Just like saying palabra. Yeah. Like, palabra is really serious in why Fred Sinelli specifically, you know, that which that's where I was at. But, you know, I I, I stayed there at Fred Sinelli's for like three years, you know, um, till I turned 18 years old. And where did you go after that? Wait, wait, wait. And through all those years, you were there three years, you said. What would you say was the worst thing? Yeah. What would you say was the worst thing you saw? Right there? Mm-hmm. Mm. Nothing. I can't say that I saw it. I heard of it. Like, uh, like I said, fools. Yeah. You know? Okay. Getting so, beat uh, up. What was the nicest thing you saw? The nicest thing? Those fools weren't nice at all, huh? Mm, the nicest thing? Mm, probably a rabbit during visiting. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> okay. So from so you were 18 and you got transferred where? To YTS. YTS. Yeah, to YTS. How so. was that? How was that? Now that was like like that's a whole nother ball game right there. Like, yeah, everybody right I there. know was at YTS. Yeah, like that's like you're already like upgraded, you know. Like oh, now we don't test each other. Now we now don't. You're, do and that. Now you're just now, feed merasa. No, now we don't even play that feed merasa leva stuff like that to that extent. That was just a fretzinellis, you know. And YTS, it's like. People are grown now, you know, like there's people 24, 23 years old and uh -huh. they've been down for 10, 11 years, 12 years, you know, and whatnot. As kids, As obviously. Kids, yeah. And um, so now things there are a little bit more serious, you know, like homies, we don't get down one on one in the open you know? So it's getting kind of more as in like the actual real prison. Transitioning to real prison okay. type. Yes. You know, like I said, um, it's. It's prison for youth yes. in all reality. Everything is, is ran by the state, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so right there, like, you're already transitioning into, like, the more prisonish mm -hmm. setting mm -hmm. type. So definitely you got to switch up your program, you know? Like, like all that hot head stuff and all this banging on the staff and, all, like, that's out the window. Okay. You getting down with your enemies and all that you are you're not gonna fight in the open like that you know like you need to go fight in the blinds and whatnot you know um with the homie there's no other race fights with the homie without it being a riot type okay. you know um ah. and now we're using weapons when there's a riot you oh. know like, did you ever experience any riots oh yeah definitely you want to tell me about your first experience my first experience as far as like man like you know how you're feeling um, you like oh, i was at I, wait? I was a fred Cinellis and um you know i i don't really remember what was like what was behind it or what but i was at fred Cinellis and uh, um i just recall like the tension between the homies and and the blacks and when we got back from i want to say like dinner time or something no breakfast uh, we just cracked it off, mm. you know? Well, I didn't, but the homies did. You were just there, obviously. I'm just following suit, you know? Um, and I just, I recall getting hit with, like, a handball inside of a sock. And I never realized that that, that thing hurts, you know? Like, oh, yeah. like, I just got smacked. I don't even know from where, who, what. But there was a sock with a handball, and that's the only thing I could think of that hit me, you know? Mm -hmm. But, um... But no, yeah, I had socks in a, I had batteries in a sock, you know, but I never heard of a handball inside of a sock, you know, until that day that I think I got hit with one and I just had a big old, like, chipote. not even chipote, like, it just leaves you like a round mark, like, 
green, purple, yellow, like, Bruce. like that Bruce type. Yeah. yeah. Because you got to think the handball, like, kind of, like, it's soft, so it kind of, like, just, like, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly like that. So, you know, it was, it was just, like. Scary? Not even scary, you know, not even scary. It's just exciting like type you know like your adrenaline is going and stuff yeah, like that yeah yeah and then plus you're experiencing it so you know you're just getting it out the way you know like yeah like like you probably don't even remember it's going so fast like you're just <gasps> yeah shit. those happen fast yeah. you know and then like in every riot that i've been at like in white ts there's more riots because okay, keep in mind right there the homies and other races they don't fight one-on-one so it's just more with the... Uh, if that yeah. happens, there's a riot. So, of course, there were more riots, you know? Yes, yes. Opposed to Fretzinelles, where it, there was only it. one riot. So and how it. long were you at YTS for? In YTS, I was there from... Um, um, let me see. Like, 97, 98. From 2000 to 2007, seven years. Oh, you yeah. were there longer. Yeah, yeah. Well, and- yeah, I got... I, I like got raised in there you know yeah yeah i got raised in there and uh i stayed at yts this whole time and and how was the program like well what was the worst thing you saw there um you know i was celled up with the same homie you know and uh, um the whole seven years no four years oh. four years with the same homie and he had been he had been down already like 10 years oh. when i became his celly so and in our reality, he had a nice ass room. He didn't really like Sally's because he just was super clean and nobody really wanted to sell up with him either because he was like too strict on mm-hmm. his cell type. He had a really nice cell. But we used to I used to sleep next door on a cell next door to him. So we used to just talk on the vent like for hours, you know, and just talk on the vent until like we became pretty close, but you know, it was weird because when we'll come out of the cell, we wouldn't really kick it with each other <laughs> out of the cell, you know, like, yeah. I don't know. It was weird. And, uh, um, but as soon as we get back into the cell, It'll like we're going to jump on, on the, the vent, vent, you know, and we're going to just chop it up and start talking about whatever, you know, yeah, for hours. And then, um, so it, that happened for, for a few months. And then finally, uh, he, he considered like, Hey, like what's up you want to sell up and i didn't want to because of the stories you've heard stories i've heard and i i just i didn't feel like i was his fit type but i tried it anyways just based on the relationship that we had and it worked and you know what it worked you know that's my boy that means you you were super clean too well i am i am (laughs) um you know i'm just organized you know like 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 I don't know. I'm just organized, you know, like I've always been like that, you know, and and yeah, me and him, like we hit it off, you know, and and four years we were together in the same cell. Four years, like little, you know, I, know, I, I, I don't even know the measurements that's your of it, but friend, that's yeah. like a bro, you know, Dude, I know his first girlfriend. He knows my first girlfriend. Did you have pen pals? Um, Yeah. Did you yeah. have girls visit you? Because over there, no. those years, it was kind of like easier to get visits, no? Um, somewhat. I I I was sent visiting forms to all kinds of girls, Aww. but you know, no one ever really came, you know. But I used to get letters, and you know, um, shout out to um my homegirl Dimples, you know, and and you know, I haven't talked to her in a long time, but you know, my whole time in YA, like. She sent me pictures. That's right. She wrote to me. She sent me stamps, happy birthday cards. That's right. Like, that like, means everything. Well, yeah, she filled up photo albums for me, you know, that I have to this day, you know, and um, and never try to get at each other. Mm-hmm. Never keep that in mind. Never, 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 she was never. Your friend, friend. She was just hitting up on walls when I was, you know, and she had a baby and and she was gangster, like gangster, gangster, like for real, <laughs> yeah. you know. And uh, I, that's she used to come to my house, you know, to chill. Like everybody else was there, so that's how I met her. And she's just one of those type of homegirls that she was I, there like, for you. I'm guessing I'm not the only one that she probably wrote to. Like she kind of corresponds with homies and mm-hmm. looks out for them. And yeah, maybe not no more, but at least then, then she was. Yeah. You know, so yeah, she kept me with a bunch of pictures, updated on stuff and and whatnot. You know, and 
And when I got out, you know, I didn't even go see her like that. Oh, you're terrible. <laughs> I know, but I mean, I see her, but it's like, like regular, you know, like, like nothing special or no, nothing, yeah, you know, I mean, like, yeah. but I thank her for definitely for um, being there for you. Definitely. You know, so did you get out of YTS or did yeah, you go uh, somewhere else? No, from YTS, um, I paroled on my 25th birthday. And how was that for you? Because being down all those seven years, you obviously got adjusted. You you were, you were, uh, fe well, I wasn't female raza or whatever, but you were cool the whole time. Yeah. Um, you, did you fight still as much? Not really because things were, yeah. right? Yeah. A little bit more smoother. Yeah. So the rest of, obviously, when you're in there, you program is the program. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah, definitely. But it wasn't as how it was at the other one for you. I mean, Fred Sinellis is a story in its own, yeah, you know, like yeah. definitely I'll never forget that in my life, you know, yeah. um, it was just something else that I didn't know that kids that age yeah. do, you know, but. But obviously they're in there. Yeah. So And they they're in there for serious charges yeah. too, you know, but look at my charges, yeah. you know, and, but in YTS you start transitioning already to more maturity and yeah. whatnot, you know, um, homies are. Are trying to do tattoos and that's oh, where so I got, wait so tell us about your tattoo uh tell us a tattoo story that's where um i got my first uh drawing tattoo you know that i don't even know what the hell my brother sent me a drawing from prison because my brother used to write to me from prison you know oh you had correspondence yeah i got approval mm -hmm. and my brother used to write to me and he used to always send me pictures and all the staff you know when the female staff when they'll go through the mail all of them, I had juice with them because they liked my brother, you know? <laughs> they used to be like, oh, what's up with your brother? Yeah. Like, whatever. You know, they thought he was handsome, you know, because he used to send those pictures. Oh, <laughs> you know? super feed me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and people would admire those type of pictures that just I had an older brother that's in prison and I write to him, mm -hmm. you know, like. So that just made me a little bit different than like a little people. cooler. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. A little cooler. Okay, so it's your twenty. It's your twenty fifth birthday. Yeah, and they, they mm -hmm. um, send me to parole board, and you know, um, that same day on your birthday. No, they sent me to parole board for an early disposition program, which is an ERP, um, which got denied. You know, because I'm category one. Um, so that didn't go through, but I would have been home like a year ago type, you know, from my birthday. Yeah. But instead, um, I stayed there till my 25th birthday and um, and I paroled on my birthday. My parents were able to pick me up anytime after like 12 o'clock type that count. Mm -hmm. the, and I didn't tell them to pick me up until six o'clock after dinner because I wanted to chill with the homies and give away my stuff and say bye to everybody. And I didn't realize that I was institutionalized, you know, because yeah. I really didn't care about going home at that point. You know, I was nervous. I was like, like not scared. I was just like nervous. And, and really I just felt behind on everything, you know, like my homies got kids and, and these fools are driving now. And, I used to drive before, but like I didn't know how to stop at the light and bro, you were fifteen. You know? But I, I mean, at, the, <laughs> I at that mean, age, yeah. I was I was still whipping. You yeah. know, I remember in a G ride, I picked up my mom from work one day, and she was like, "They can assist that van." It was a Toyota minivan. <laughs> Those were the easiest ones, the one that you slide the door. <laughs> <laughs> and I had just barely learned, and I knew my mom needed a ride home, hmm. so I went to go pick her up, and uh, she was like, "They can assist that van." And I was like, oh, mi amigo me la prestó para que viniera por usted, you know? <laughs> and I took her home in a G-Ride, you know? And she didn't, she never Pobre. knew, you know? But she was good with it. That's she right. was good with it. You know, my mom was with the program, you know? Um, but yeah, so everybody was older and they got kids and, and, and some of them are doing good and other of them are doing bad and, you know? So definitely I felt left behind, you know? And... You know, like I would just stay inside my house a lot. So you got picked up at six o'clock. Your parents picked you up. Yeah. You walked out. I walked out and I just seen my sister was driving. And I was like, what the hell? She didn't even know how to drive when I went in, you yeah. know? And then she had another son that I didn't even know, you know? Oh, wow. Which is my godson, you know? Um, Adrian, you know? And, 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 you know, it was just, it was just different, you know, just for me being in the car. 
But then, like, when I got to my city, South Central, like, exiting the freeway on Gage or Vernon, everything was the same. Everything was the same. It was a trip. Even the little store, like, was the changed. same. Like, nothing. How did that changed. make you feel? Weird. Weird. Like, weird. I was like, what? I've been thinking it's a party out here. Like, no. it's not no party, dude. It's not no party. Like, it's it's a trip because, I mean, homies in jail, they think that, like, the world revolves different and everybody's in their same stories. And half of them are bullshit, you know, like, yeah. straight up, you know, like, 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 they're just conversating, you know. Mm -hmm. But in reality, reality, like, out oh, here's where it's at, yeah. you know, out oh, here's where it's at, you know, like. And there, it's easy for you to ask for hundreds and, oh, could you send this? Could you do green that? Could you do that? But in reality, like, that costs. Yeah. You know how I know? Because I get my homies green dots and yeah. here and there whenever yeah. whenever mm -hmm. I'm feeling it. You know, like, hey, here, get some homies, homies whatever. They don't ask me mean. for it, you yeah. know? But I, I'll have it for when they call me, you know, I mm -hmm. just, whatever. Hey, fool here, you know? Of course. Um, so it would make me feel good, you know. So if I could do that for them, like I, I, I would, you know, and I do, here and there. Not out, not as much as no, I because could, Lego, you give one, you know, one time. You know how we are. We let us one time, and it's over. We're calling every day. But <laughs> <That laughs> well, you guys know what it. But yeah. they know what it is. You know, they know. Yeah, we know what real. it is. They know what it is. For so real. you're out. How long have you been out? Um, I want to say like. 10 years now you know well like, congratulations thank you thank you and how uh, has it been how was the how was it for you adjusting um you know it wasn't like it wasn't like even adjusting that i i could say you know because like i mean i still know the same friends i still go to the same blocks i still do the same thing you know like but now I'm just more mature with it. Like, and I try to get my little homies to just hear me out, you know, that times has changed. Yes. Times has changed. And you guys are listening to stories, you know, but in reality, that was stories back then. Mm -hmm. And the law has changed. Yes. And that's what I, I, I feel that like a lot of the younger generation, like, um, they don't really understand the concept of that, you know, and. And, you know, that's why, I, like, the line of work that I do. Yeah, I was about to ask you, uh, so what is it that you do? Uh, I mean, you know, I have a passion for what I do, you know. Cause, Which is? Um, I'm a crisis intervention okay. worker. You also did say known, it earlier, just in case you guys weren't watching. Uh, um, also known as a community intervention worker. Okay. You know, and um, we work through the mayor's office um, and through... And from the grids office, you know, which is uh, gang reduction, youth development. And um, basically, you know, um, what we do is a community based organization, you know, um, you know, I don't even know if like I don't see why I wouldn't be able to say the, their name or whatnot. But just, you know, yeah. I would just keep it at that, you know, but uh, um, so it's a community based organization. And basically what we do is everything community-based you know um, we do rapid housing we uh advocate for youth we advocate for people you know um we do victims of crime we do food distributions we do toy giveaways turkey giveaways we help our people with bus passes whatever yeah whatever's gonna you help know, somebody whatever's gonna help somebody you know to get past whatever they're going through in their lives you know and you know, for the people that's, you know, watching and, and listening, you know, that they don't really realize how many resources there is and how much money is right there for them and for their needs. You know, because, dude, if I see somebody in a car with a child on everything, I'm going to put her in a house, rapid housing, connected with the case manager, and they're going to pay her rent for two years. And, and like, what the hell? Like, why is there so many people out there but you know so much money has got put into that to clean up the streets from all these homeless encampments and all that stuff and oh, um wow. yeah that's the type of movement that i'm on you know like like i'm trying to um build communities you know um i've done so much breaking 
that like now I'm trying to like build up, you know. And it and, probably helps you as well, huh? Well, yeah, definitely. But you know, like I said, I've always been a people's person, you know. Um, even in my jail settings, you know, like I'm for the people, I'm for the program. Yeah, you said it earlier. You know, and 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 I mean, like I said, the homies will call out bullshit, bullshit. when uh -huh. it is, and and it ain't never been no bullshit over here. Yeah. You know, like straight up. You for know, sure. like like my program. That's always been what it is, you know. I've always been a people's person. I get along with homies. Homies tend to catch a liking to me. And like I said, you know, I've had my share of, of, you know. Experiences. Experiences in the mix and whatnot, you know. And just keep it at that, you know. Thank God it's just, um, the, thank God it's the past now. Yeah, definitely. But just, those are those experiences are that I'm never going to forget. No, never. You know, never, never. And there's just a lot of things that. You know, I just rather not touch on, you oh, know, of course. and, and, and whatnot. But, you know, like, I just figured that, that this interview for you will probably be a little bit different because like, I don't do social media. No, you, you know? don't. So for me being here is a lot. It's a lot. And I appreciate it. You know, you know, it's, it's funny, like you said, cause you don't, like you just said, you don't have social media. So when your girl hit Dude, me Dude, I up, don't even give people my phone number. <laughs> I was, I had to like message her. I was like, well, he doesn't have social media. So is it going to be all. okay? To, is he going <laughs> to be okay to talk? So then you send the voice message and I was like, oh, he is a good talker. Good. And I, and it actually made me feel like, okay, good. Let's do it. Like, yeah. You know? And, and you know, that's why I, I sent that. Um, voice recording because I don't do that either. <laughs> I appreciate it. I don't do that either, <laughs> you know. But um, I just thought it would be a good idea just based on the fact that I know I don't have no social media. Yeah. I don't do social media. But you know what? It's good that you 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 came on here. You said what you do because I do know a lot of people, or there is a lot of people that do watch yeah. that are going through those things. Yes, and, um, and I mean, you know, um, definitely we could exchange numbers. Yeah, and I and, will. And, 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 I will. And because what we do is connect dots. Got it. And we it. connect people to where they need to be connected. Got it. To help them get through with whatever, whatever. they're going through. Because sometimes they don't even know where they need to be. On their what what that, dot they need to connect. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, okay. and 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 for me, for myself, you know, like, um, it's a rewarding feeling to me. You know, and and and. If I could help somebody, because in all, in all reality, if I would have had somebody talk to me, like I talked to them, I would have probably been something else with my life, you know? Just have enough of me drilling in my head, mm -hmm. I would have done something else with my life, you know? I would have probably stayed in school and got myself a degree and all that good stuff, you know? Yeah. And been living it up, legit, you know? But you know what? The um, internet's changed people's lives, yes. you know? Because... Um, you know, it's it's crazy. Like from one day to another, your life could change. You know, but what do you do with it? Yeah. What do you do with it? You know, like yeah. what do you do with it? Like I've seen so many, so many successes that are here and gone. Yeah. You know, like I'm singing their song, their lyrics in my head for this week and next week it's another one. Yeah. And or whatever. Whatever you it know? is. Yeah. Whatever it is, but. You know, everything just happens so, so fast, fast now. Like, ask somebody right now, like, where they see themselves five, ten years down the line. <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Before, you could ask somebody that, and there was this thing of, like, setting goals and stuff. People don't set goals right now. Like, they might have be determined to do something, but in our reality, like... Like, you can't think that far down the line. you just don't know. Because you just don't know. Wait, earlier you said something that, um, you said, because right now you're doing, you know, you're, you're, you, you learn, you know, all of this stuff, you know, and you, you help people. Who helped you? Because you said that you didn't know how to write. I didn't. And I didn't know how to read either, you know? But one thing I did know how to do was I knew how to draw on envelopes and, and, I always had a thing for letters, you know, because I was hitting up on the walls and whatnot. And I knew how to trace and, and then just do a little shading because I draw to this day. Okay. I draw. And um, when I'm just going through something mentally, like, it's, like it's your escape. I, I get my, my sketchbook and I get my pencils. And if I show you my setup, you're going to be like, what the hell? You're going to be mind blown, you know? <laughs> and and so I'm not talking my about My son is like, an artist. Oh yeah, my oh, oldest. Cool. Yeah, like I, I, I want to say I use it 
for like therapy purposes now, just I've never said it before, but I want to say it kind of like works for me. But I like art. I'll paint, I'll draw, I'll, I'm crafty. I like do it yourself. You know, I got animals. I got turtle. You know, I got a turtle that lives free in my room. Yeah. You know, like a tortoise, like the desert tortoise. And um, um, yeah, it just I'm a animal person you know i'm like i don't know i'm just chill you know that's good yeah. no you're and, you're and, older and you're we're 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 older <laughs> we're you know you're an older yeah. man i'm an older woman and now we know what we like and what we don't like and we stick to what makes us happy you know yeah 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 to to a sense you know because in reality like um like just with all my losses i've had in my life you know and and I just learned how to appreciate things, things more now. That's right. You know? Yes. And like I'm I'm not like um like well you see I don't have no social media. I don't I don't do none of that. Like I'm just pretty chill and laid back and you know, Private. I'm just happy to be out. That's right. You know, I'm happy to be Even out. Even though you've been out all these years, but you're still super grateful. I fight with not going back still. That's you right. You know, because yeah. cops see me. Well, you see representing, you know, yeah. but I mean, <laughs> I get it. You know, you, you never know? forget where you you never forget where you come from. Never, that's who you are. At never, the end of the day, never, it's who we are. You know, never. that's why it trips me out. Like when uh, I've had good homies that hurts my heart just talking about it. You know, where like I can't associate with them no more because whatever reasons. You know, I know what you mean. And 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 it sucks. You know, but then I sit there and I think about the details of it. And it really doesn't suck, you know, because I wouldn't put myself in that situation. Yeah, you did it to you yourself. Know? Like, like I remain solid to this day, That's right. you know. And and like I said, your audience will call it out, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I just think about it, and I just be like, damn, dude, like how could they have put themselves in a situation like that, you know? Yeah. Like, like, like that's pretty deep, dude. Yeah. Because to me, like, to me. I'm throwing away a whole lot. Like, yeah. like, dude, it took me a lot to be where I'm at right now and still be alive because I got bullet holes in my body and I could sit here and tell you war stories for days. You know? So wait, you got shot before you were 15? No, I got shot um, after I got out, um, after I got out of jail. You know, like, I can't say that, like, my life changed as soon as I got out. And okay, I, I, I you understand, know? but you just but, never, yeah. But, you know, through got the it. course of time, you know, um, you know, like I said, that's the only people that I know. Yeah. You know, and um, and that's who I call my friends. You know. Yeah. And and that's that. That's that. I you get know? it. Yes, I understand. Um, so so in our reality, like you know, be around that enough, and it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. That's right. You know. Yeah. It's gonna happen, and you know, I'm 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 blessed to be here today. You know, like definitely, I'm I'm blessed to be here. You know, I. I have a relationship with that man, word, God, you know, mm -hmm. um, because like I never grew up religious or nothing like that. My parents never took me to church or or none of that. Yeah. Nothing, nothing like that. You know, like we barely even got stuff for Christmas, you know, like real talk. Yeah. You know, like kids on my block had bikes and we got a sweater. How do you think that made me feel? Yeah. No, <laughs> no, I know. How do you think that made me feel? You know? Horrible. So, like, child. definitely now we got a badass Christmas tree, even an extra one that I'm going to donate to my office. <laughs> um, you know, and, and yeah. my house is lit up with Christmas stuff, like good stuff, yeah. you know, that I would have never thought we could have had, you know, and now. I have a bedroom and we live in a four bedroom and yeah. three bathrooms and my sister got a bathroom in her room, yeah, you know, and we yeah. never had that growing up. Of course. Never, never. We lived in bunk, bunk beds and two for a bunk, mm -hmm. you know, and, yeah. and, and me, my dad, my mom would sleep in the living room and on the floor or a sofa bed, but it was more comfortable on the floor. Yeah. You know, cause those bars on the sofa bed it hurt. It hurt. Yeah. My dad used to 
like force us to eat tortillas and all that good Just stuff. So you could you get know, cool. yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. You had it rough, and you know what? Yeah. Gracias a Dios, you're yeah. out here. You're living your best life. Yeah, you're living yeah, your life definitely. how you want to live. Definitely, and, you know, we go through the stuff we put ourselves through, unfortunately, and but we're here. Yeah, we're here, and yeah. I I appreciate you coming. Thank on you, my channel. thank you for you know responding to. My girls. Uh, yeah. Is there anything message. else you would like to share before we cut it? No, you know, I just in our reality, like I said, this is something new for me. You know, I would have never done this. You know, I watched your podcast before and and it catches my attention and I like what you're doing and your husband and whatnot. You know, I haven't seen much of of him, but definitely I see him all day when I'm scrolling, <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, but. You know, thank you, you know, for having me here because, I mean, somebody out there heard me, paid That's attention right. to me, listened to me, and a lot of people know me, and 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 it's just a trip to see yeah. me here, you know, yeah. in all reality because I wouldn't be here for nothing, <laughs> yeah. you know? Well, you're here. Yeah. Thank and, you so and much. Thank you so much. And, uh, um, you know, everything happens for a reason. That's right. You know, everything happens for a reason. And uh, definitely, thank you. Oh, um, you're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you again. Yeah. And um, yeah, thank everybody for tuning in <laughs> and whatnot, you know, but yeah, it was a experience that I'll never forget. For sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you for watching Indicted TV. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and follow us on Instagram.